Yeah, he later turned out to be a good pick. Better than the fifth pick where I thought it was going to go. I thought it was going to go to Quebec. And yeah. Quebec might have had probably the worst draft pick in the history of the first round with, uh, you know, drafting Daniel Doré, which who was a tough guy in the in the in the Quebec League uh, back then. Um, I don't think he played one game in the National Hockey League. To tell you the truth, at least not a regular season game. Okay, Jr. You spent a lot of time in Phoenix and Chicago. Which did you like most? Well, I, I mean, every city that I played in had had awesome characteristics. I mean, I, if you if you look at the five cities that I played in, I arguably played in the best places to either place play a sport or live. So Chicago being one of the best sports cities with the Bulls and this during the Bulls run during the early 90s. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the Bears coming off of 86, you know, winning a Super Bowl. You know, I was drafted in 88, so that was a the happening thing. The Bulls were always big. The Bears were always big. and just sports in general. Plus, it's it's the Mecca. Chicago is the Mecca of, of the United States, and especially the Midwest. Um, yeah. You move into Philly, which has, without a doubt, the most passionate, most hard-nosed, most uh, diabolical, but most loyal fans that I've ever seen. Uh, I had a great relationship with Philly. So, and and two again, another good city to live in, a good metropolitan city to live in. Um, yeah. Then I go to Phoenix, where you know the, I could play golf in the afternoon. I can go to go to practice in flip flops and a t shirt and shorts. Um, yeah. You know, it was, it was beautiful weather all the time. You can live your life without being yeah. bothered by people. And it was the For same sure. in San, San Jose and L.A. Um, San Jose is a little different because the, 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 the fans were passionate there. I mean, we had yeah. rowdy. We had a rowdy team. We had a rowdy uh, group of fans. Uh, the building was awesome to play in. And we were one of the best teams in the league. So yeah. arguably, arguably, I had probably five of the best teams I could cities I could possibly play in. Yeah. I mean, Phoenix right now, they're pretty hot in that new arena they got. they playing well. Yeah, yeah if, if you like playing in a minor league minor league arena yeah. and you like being, yeah. like being a minor league team. Um, but the, you got to give them credit. They play with heart. They play, yeah. they play, they play hard. They play, um, they play uh, competitive hockey. And they might not be the most, uh, most talented team, but they, they, they probably have the team that has the most, uh, most commitment and the most, uh, and probably the most will uh, in the right. National Hockey League. Yeah. Yep. I mean, yeah, I'm not, uh, I don't think they're going to win the, the, uh, the Bedard, uh, um, no, no, that's kind of Bedard, that's kind of Bedard, but, yeah, they're not going to win it either. No, that's hey, gonna, they're going to go what? right. They're going to go right to Chicago. He's going right to JR, Chicago. Chicago. Do you remember your first NHL goal? Because you, you still have the puck. I do have the puck. Um, it was uh, it was crazy because I was playing in in Hull and uh, I got an emergency call up in February. Yeah. I actually I actually hadn't played a game in over a month after coming back after the World Juniors. I got hurt in my first game back in Hull. So I hadn't played for a month. Uh, the Blackhawks had too many injuries. They had an emergency situation where they were able to bring up a guy out of junior. They brought me in um, from Hull. And I actually missed a flight in Toronto to get there because of a snowstorm and, and a car accident that I got into trying to get to the airport. Yeah, you got T-boned. Um, yeah, I T-boned. I ran a stop sign, T-boned somebody else, and almost didn't make it. Luckily, you know, luckily the, the, um, the Hull – uh, police force were fans of mine. They they got me to the airport, got on my flight, and I scored that night. Didn't even didn't even play, didn't even skate in the um, in the pregame skate. They put a jersey on me without my name on it, just my number, and um, I scored my first goal against Kari Taco. It was not a pretty goal, but uh, it was assisted by Brian Noonan, you know, the guy that I used to play with in the summertime is back in Boston. So it's pretty pretty cool, unique goal to, for being my first one. Then I scored my next two games after that. And I remember Mike Keenan told Mike Gapsky, the trainer, make sure that those guys that are injured stay on the injured list because we can't afford to send JR down right now. He's playing too well. So I ended up staying up for like, uh, I think, 20 games that season. Oh, wow. Yeah, I knew the name bar story too. And uh, I drop, I'm dropping in the highlights of your first goal as you were explaining that. So the uh, nine-time All-Star, uh, what's your thoughts on being recognized by your peers so many times? 
Well, obviously, I, I took that very seriously. I, I, I mean, I loved being an all-star. And it bothered me when there was a lot of people who, who refused to go to all-star games because they wanted to take a break. They wanted some time off. I mean, you're recognized as one of the best players in the league, um, one of the best players on your team and to represent your team. So I always I always thought that was a great honor and I loved loved doing it. Um, I thought there was a few years I should have been on it where I where I wasn't on it. But, um, uh, you know, nine, I had some pretty good all star games and obviously some of the skills competitions I did really well in and um, won the accuracy shooting a couple of times. But. Again, these are you know to be uh, be amongst the top top players of, of your peers in, in, in a sport, especially a professional sport, is, is something to be really proud of. So you got a lot of things going on right now. Of course, the two books are out, and you also started Whiskey in the Wild. Yeah, um, can you tell us about it's your new product? It's right here, baby, Whiskey in the Wild. Oh, there uh, she it's is. A, it's, yeah. It's a beautiful bottle, as you can see. We did something very cool. We put a flask in the bottle. We we wow. call it the traveling. We put it. We call it the traveling spirit. You know, we want to make sure that people can take it with them when they leave the house. But it's also a really, really awesome spirit to uh, to enjoy at home in front of a fire. Uh, it's a chocolate whiskey. We also have a chocolate orange flask. Comes right off. Bottle sits there. Take it right with you. Um, we've uh, we started it in 2020. And we wanted something that was very unique and something different. Uh, there's not many chocolate whiskeys in the world. And the ones that are out there, are, to tell you the truth, are not very good. Um, this will change This will change the way that you feel about whiskey, whether you're a whiskey drinker or not, which most women aren't. But uh, we have been able to capture the female audience when it comes to drinking whiskey. And I think a lot of, uh, a lot of men ex really appreciate the fact that they can drink a glass of whiskey with their significant other, there you uh, go. Whether, it's at, whether it's at a golf course, on a fire, whether it's on a camping trip, or whether you know, you're just sitting at, the, sitting at the house in front of the TV before you go to bed. It is truly one of, the greatest, um, one of the greatest whiskeys ever created. And it's a chocolate and chocolate orange. And we've just been killing it. Just been absolutely killing it. The chocolate orange one, I can imagine it tastes like one of those chocolate oranges at Christmas that you would bang down. You know what it tastes like? It actually tastes like an old fashioned right out of the bottle. Put a nice big, big block of ice, pour it. It's an old fashioned. It's got that nice orangey taste. Um, there's no burn going down. Um, you get a really good chocolate taste with it. And, um, you know, I, I can't tell you how many people that I've gone up to in the course of a week or a day. And asked them if they like whiskey, and they said no. And I said, "Well, would you mind trying mine?" And they're like, "I don't think so." And I convinced them too. And literally, about ninety percent of the people buy it right after they try it. So it's wow. it's, it's yeah, we've we're um, we, de we definitely we definitely have something that's really special. There's no question. I always say the bottle the bottle is very interesting. The bottle will catch your eye. Yes, but the lick but the liquid will ca will capture your heart. And it'll bring you back. There's no question and about it. I know right now it's not in Canada, but it's on its way. Yeah, we're we're hoping at some point next year that we can get it up into Canada. Um, you know, so the best way to do it is to get down here into the states, order yeah. a bottle, and uh, and sneak it in in your uh, in your yeah. luggage back up back up in, into Canada. But uh, listen, I do use a Canadian whiskey out of uh, out of Alberta. So um, I do appreciate a good Canadian whiskey. So we're, we're representing in that aspect. But uh, right now it is not available in Canada. A lot of harsh rules up there in Canada. The liquor liquor laws are pretty tough up there. The government owns I, all the liquor. And, yeah. You know, so we'll see what happens. So what, what did you think when uh, Tom Brady copied you and came out of retirement? You retired, um, for, you retired shortly and then came out of retirement. Well, I didn't. I didn't retire. I just had, had nobody that wanted to draft me. So I mean, it wanted to uh, sign me. So uh, I just spent a couple a couple extra months without a team. Um, you know, I, I, it, to me, it wasn't. I don't care about coming out of retirement because I mean, the Gronk did it. I think maybe twice. Um, and he's going to do it again. Yeah, my my. I mean why do it and then come back like a couple weeks later? I, that's what I don't get. That's it was. You know, I, it's. I, I thought that was a really bad miscommunication and probably a bad judgment on his part. But he is the goat. I mean, you don't question anything that the goat does. He can't taint his his legacy, no matter what he does. In my opinion. 